So I really only used 10 colors in my palette. And what I thought I'd do is go through all of them today in some detail to explain why they're so important. If you're one of our AA subscribers, you might have already actually seen a little bit about this. Um, if you're not, go and subscribe right now. There'll be a link here somewhere. Um, but we're gonna go into the colors in a little bit more detail. Hi, I'm Mark Waller. And one of the greatest joys of my life has been looking at beautiful things in nature and finding ways to paint them. Uh, this channel is all about me sharing that experience with you guys. So before I get into the colors, um, there's something I'd like to sort of point out first. And over the years of sharing uh, this information with people, I've watched lots of people struggle with trying to make paintings using tiny little palettes. So I'd like you to consider having a great big workspace to um, mix all your colors up in, to place all your paint out. And you'll find that if you have a big palette and you manage it really well, the whole thing will, the whole process will be a, a whole lot easier. So I've laid out the colors that I would use. Um, and as you can see, this palette's almost past its use by date. I think it weighs about 25 kilos. <laughs> but you can see having a big space to work on means I can mix up plenty of color and I'm less likely to run into patches of color and mix color with colors that I didn't need to, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to start with white. Um, I use lots of white, um, but, and obviously it's obvious what we use white for, but uh, one of the little tricks and a little tip I'll give you is that I quite often mix colors a little bit paler than I need to, because white will uh, quite often take the intensity out of color. But if you make it a little bit lighter and then mix a glaze, a thin glaze with say a little bit of a different color, like a red or a yellow over the top of it, all of a sudden that lovely luminosity comes back. So in my selection of colors, I have a warm and cool of every primary. And this is the color that I use uh, as my uh, cool red. Um, it's incredibly versatile. If you mix it with phthalo blue, it's fantastic for creating the illusion of rocks under the water or reef under the water. You can actually mix it uh, with phthalo blue and make really deep shadows um, and dark colors. I don't use black in my general painting at all. Um, but if you make it sort of with more of the alizarin, that uh, phthalo blue and alizarin combination, you can warm it up by adding more alizarin or cool it down by using more phthalo blue. Incredibly versatile and great for getting really, really dark darks. So I generally use uh, naphthal red light. Um, and this is a great color for, you know, for flowers or highlights or, you know, um, putting flecks of color in bright sunlight or um, sort of warming up skies. It's just a, a lovely warm red. I don't use a lot of it actually because uh, by the time it's pretty intense, you don't want to overdo it. So I'm using uh, one of my other favorite colors is cadmium yellow medium. Now this is fantastic. It's, um, I tend to use this, um, again, sunsets, things like that. And it's a lovely warm yellow, um, you know, flecks of color, tropical fish, stuff like that. Um, it's great if you mix it with forest green to create the illusion of leaves, leaves being backlit. Um, and it makes a lovely kind of lolly lime green. Um, and it's lovely and warm. And I tend to use this more above the surface of the water um, and probably the cooler yellow below the surface of the water. But this is, um, I quite often talk about colors uh, or talk, talk about the time of day in terms of colors. Um, this is the color that I add to things from about three o'clock to say 4.30. So this is my cool yellow. This is cadmium yellow light. And if you mix this with phthalo blue and white, it gives you the most exquisite tropical watercolors. Um, it's lovely for, if you mix it with the alizarin, you get these beautiful kind of luminous oranges and reds, a um, little bit of white in there, does lovely Banksia flowers, things like that. Um, and if you mix it with sort of the forest green or the phthalo blue, it makes lovely, lovely colors for putting in the depths of shadows, you know, a little bit of leaf that's reflecting sky or something like that. And it's also great to add with white to put to hi as highlights on leaves or um, especially pandanus leaves, things like that. And that's probably, weirdly enough, even though it's a cool color, more of a, a yellow that I'll, that I'll add to the middle of the day. It's sort of a bit cleaner, but um, yeah, can't go past this if you're painting tropical water. So most of these colors I'm talking about, I use in my, uh, my paint recipes book. Um, but forest green is an incredibly versatile color. It's one of the colors that I kind of call, it's a, a pivotal color. So for example, 
on its own it makes a, a nice kind of tree foliage color but here in Australia our trees are a little bit more olive so I tend to add dioxazine purple to that to warm it up a little bit and a bit of cad yellow medium but um, if I just add neat white to that it makes that lovely color of leaves deep in the shadows or if I add white and cadmium yellow light a little bit of that makes lovely highlights on the leaves um, or you know you can just use it neat too it's actually one of the colors neat that I use in that transition from say the cooler colors in the shadows out into the warmer colors and if you mix it with cadmium yellow medium as I said before it makes a lovely lovely color to create the illusion of leaves being backlit you just have to tweak it a little bit with a little bit of red or purple or something like that to warm it up or add a bit of phthalo blue to cool it down but super cool color super cool so this is phthalo blue um, this is my cool blue I go through industrial quantities of this stuff um, this is a sensational color if you're painting oceans um, especially if the water is reasonably clean this is your color if you add cadmium, cadmium yellow light to it and some white and you know sort of little shifts here, here and there in different directions you can create almost the whole range of um, colors that you might need to paint water um, but it's also great too for cooling down the sky a little bit you know if you transitioning through a, a gradation um, up into the cooler part of the sky if you add a little bit of that say to a French ultramarine blue it creates a lovely 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 blue really lovely blue um, and again it's a, a lovely color to add into your shallow shadows you put a little bit of white on it here and there or a little bit of highlights on leaves and things like that um, just yeah I, I quite like phthalo blue <laughs> So this is my warm blue, French ultramarine, and I tend to use a, this with a lot of white uh, to represent the sky close to the horizon. Sort of creates the illusion of a little bit of dirt or dust in the air because it's nice and warm. Um, and it's also fantastic if you add it with a bit of white, it creates lovely, lovely highlights on the backs of the waves. And I use it a lot for make, creating the illusion of ripples on the surface of the water. Um, it's great also if you mix it with a little bit of forest green and some white and you can create the lovely uh, blue skylight being reflected off leaves, you know, pandanus leaves and things like that. So um, French ultramarine blue is fantastic. Great for sunsets as well. If you poke a little bit of that blue through the, through the clouds, it sort of creates the impression of a, you know, a bit of a gap in the clouds and that blue there. Um, it's a funny old color. I don't realize how much I use it until I start talking about it, but um, I kind of can't live without this one either now. So I love doxazine purple. It's, it's one of those colors that I call a, a pivotal color. And as I mentioned before, I use it with forest green a lot for my foliage to sort of dirty the color of the leaves up a little bit. But it, it's so amazing if you, if you mix it with phthalo blue, for example, you can create a range of blues that tend in towards purples or cool down that are fantastic for creating you know different lights on the surface of the water or different um, effects in the sky um, you can add it to burnt umber for example to create warmer parts of rocks and um, if you add it actually and i and go into this in my recipes if you add it to cadmium yellow medium and some white it gets the almost perfect color for sand in lots and lots and lots of circumstances um, and it's great sometimes just for scrubbing in you know uh, dark areas in the trees in the shadows where you sort of want it to still be quite warm but you want it nice and deep it's almost black um, and it's also a great color for using in the sky quite often you get this lovely really delicate purple between the yellows fading up into the blue and, and if you add white to that that just nails it. it this is I, I use this everywhere shadows on the sand in summer can't go past it it's fantastic burnt umber <laughs> it's kind of not sexy but it's kind of I, it's a workhorse burnt umber is a workhorse it's such a great color if you add a little bit of white to it you get a lovely sort of a trunk color and you can you know tweak it a little bit with adding a bit of purple to it or a bit of cadmium yellow medium or a bit of French ultramarine blue uh, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber together make a great color for rocks tree trunks things like that um, it's also quite dark which means you can just brush it in neat into the shadows to create just the suggestion of branches uh, in the background um, it's also great for 
I mentioned before using dioxazine purple, cadmium yellow medium and white to keep uh, create a sand color. Sometimes it's a little bit too clean, but burnt umber added to that, perfect. Um, and if you wanna create the illusion of crystal clear water and a wave breaking, if you run a really thin line of uh, uh, burnt umber right along the bottom of the wave, it creates this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous looking shadow on the sand. Um, and if you add cad yellow uh, medium to it, it creates the beautiful light on the underside of a branch when the sun hits the sand and bounces back up onto a leaf or on a branch or something like that. So burnt umber is one of those colors now that's kind of completely woven through my practice. And standing here, I'm not even sure in how many ways that I do, but it's, I just keep going back for it and back for it and back for it while I'm painting. I could probably stand here and talk about burnt umber for hours. <laughs> So of course I'm using Atelier Interactive, uh, fantastic for blending and great because I can use them in the same way as I could normal acrylics, can't go past them. So there's heaps of uh, practical uh, explanations and applications of using these colour woven through this channel. There's a great one about doing uh, bushscapes using uh, forest green as a pivotal colour somewhere here and I'll see you in the next video.